To make really great French onion soup, all you really have to focus on is two main things. Making a great stock and cooking the onions properly. The stock takes the longest and if you really wanna maximize its flavor, you really wanna do this ahead of time. So the start of this recipe and that stock starts yesterday. Now when I make a brodo on this channel, usually I don't roast the bones or the chicken first to keep things neutral. But today we wanna make a nice dark brown stock. So I have some bone marrow, some shanks, some ribeye bones from steaks throughout the year. Just gonna spread that out on a sheet tray and get that into a 450 degree oven and start to brown those really well. A dark stock's gonna give a lot of deep flavor and it's gonna add a lot to something like a French onion soup. While it cooks, we wanna cut up some vegetables. We just roughly chop some carrots, some celery, quarter these onions, cutting them through the root end to leave them intact. And I like to keep the paper on to add some color to the broth. And then we just wanna quarter up some cremini mushrooms. While the meat's browning, you just want to give it a quick check to make sure everything's browning properly. And once one side browns nicely, we want to give them a rotate, then pop it back in the oven until they're all perfectly roasted. Once the bones have really nice color all around, we can get that out of the oven and transfer the bones into a large stock pot. Once the bones are in that stock pot, you wanna drain that fat. We're gonna use a bunch of that in the recipe down the road and it's great for a whole bunch of things. Then we get that stock pot onto the stove and we wanna fill it up with cold water and bring that up to a boil. And while that comes up to a boil, we're gonna take our chopped vegetables and add them onto the sheet tray with a little bit of that fat. And then I wanna work one of these small cans of tomato paste into the vegetables. And then we wanna lower the temperature on the oven just slightly and roast those vegetables to sort of create a little bit more fond on the bottom of that sheet tray. See these stuck on bits right here? That's what we're looking for. Once we got nice caramelization on that sheet tray, get it out of the oven and set it aside. And by now there should be some scum accumulating on top. And if it's boiling, we wanna drop the heat down to a simmer and we just wanna skim off that scum from the top of the stock. Once we think we've cleaned off the stock enough, then we can go and add those vegetables into the stock. And then you can just add a few ladles full of the stock into the sheet tray and use a flat bottom spatula to basically deglaze and scrape up all those stuck on delicious bits on that sheet tray that's gonna add a ton of flavor. You might need to do it a few times and when it's nice and clean, just add it all to the stock pot. Then we can add some split cloves of garlic, some fresh thyme, some bay leaf, and some fresh peppercorn. And we can bring that up to a boil and then drop it down to a simmer. I'm moving it over to the weakest and lowest burner. And I'm just gonna let this simmer all night for about 24 hours. After it's been simmering for about a day, we can turn the heat off, let it cool down, and start to strain out that broth in a separate smaller pot with a strainer, a fine mess strainer works best. And once all that broth is strained out, we can discard the bones and then we can skim off the fat. I like using this fat separator so I can skim off all of the fat off the top into the separator and then if I get any stock in there, I can just transfer that back into the pot very easily. And then I've got a ton of fat that I've removed that I can save for another purpose. Once the pot's cooled, we can get that off the stove. It's a nice, beautiful, clear stock with lots of depth and flavor. We can transfer that into quart containers. Now I'm gonna save four of those quarts for another use, and I'm gonna save two and a half quarts for the French onion soup. And then we can move on into the next part of our recipe, the second most important part, which is cooking the onions. Now a quick word from our sponsor. Now it's the new year, and in light of the past few years we've had, I'm very much keeping my health top of mind going forward. That includes eating better, exercising, taking vitamins, and it's why I'm happy to be sponsored today by Ritual. Ritual is launching their new essential protein daily shakes to support maintenance of lean muscle mass and to promote healthy, active aging for everyone, not just athletes. Essential protein for 18 and over contains all nine essential amino acids, contain 20 grams of vegan pea protein, and like all Ritual products, essential protein is soy-free, gluten-free, vegan-friendly, and formulated with non-GMO ingredients. There's no added sugar or sugar alcohols. It contains no major allergens, artificial sweeteners, or colors. And it actually tastes really good thanks to vanilla flavor that is handcrafted using direct from farmer vanilla beans. And just like all of Ritual's products, their supply chain is fully traceable and transparent so you know what you're consuming. 
Get 10% off your first three months of Ritual by going to ritual.com backslash cooking and enter the code cooking at checkout to help fuel your body right. And thanks Ritual for sponsoring this video. Now back to the recipe. So now that our stock is perfect, we can focus on the onions. Now I need three to four pounds of sliced onions at the end. So I usually buy probably five, five and a half pounds of onions. And after you cut off the edges and the ends and the paper kind of equates to about three or four. Three gives you about the minimum amount of onions you're gonna need in a soup like this. So anything above that just sort of amps up the amount of onions that are gonna be in this soup. The first thing we wanna do is cut the root and the stem off of the onions and get all the paper off. And just go through and peel all the onions first. Get them set off to the side. And I'm just using a scale to just sort of just make sure I've got the right amount. And you just go through and make your way slicing all of the onions. And you don't wanna go too thin. About a quarter inch thin. These are gonna cook a lot and really collapse. So you want them big enough once they collapse. They're gonna be fully softened by the time you're eating them in the soup, but you kinda don't want them to just vanish and disappear because they were too thin. Next time somebody tells you that having good knife skills isn't important, just remember one time in life you're gonna need to cut this amount of onions and having those knife skills might come in handy. And if you do this unevenly, you're gonna have less cooked onions and then more caramelized onions and some might get burnt and some might be undercooked. It becomes a whole thing. So the easiest thing to do is to just have good knife skills, practice, and just do it properly. You don't have to be perfect, you just have to be close enough. We're gonna get a nice big pot, anything heavy, something's gonna retain some good heat. And before we start cooking, I have a baguette, a really beautiful, delicious baguette that I couldn't help. For me, there's never enough bread and the bread is always kind of like, I don't know, it's never done the way I'd like. My strategy is to have nice little kind of hardly baked crunchy croutons. So instead of having to cut through the bread with the spoon, which is always a pain, I'm gonna pre-cut them, toast them, and then add them to the soup. And so it's a better eating experience in my opinion. So what I'm gonna do is go for like a nice, I don't know. See, it's around the, the thickness of the tip of this serrated knife. And then I'm just gonna cut them in half. And then take those and cut them into like little quarters, depending on how big your baguette is. This is kind of a bigger baguette. If you have a smaller one, you might just need to cut them into little halves. Now I'm imagining like maybe that amount in one bowl, depending on the size of your bowl. Later, I'm gonna let these dry out. Cool thing we can do is take a piece of garlic and once they're toasted, rub a little bit of the garlic on there so we have these garlic scented croutons that are gonna go in and be super delicious. I'm gonna let those dry out while the onions cook, which is gonna take a bit of time. Now I've got my onions and usually I cook this in a little bit of olive oil and some butter, which is what my recipe is gonna call for, but we made our stock. And remember all that beautiful fat that we reserved? We're gonna cook the onions in that. You can also add a little bit of butter if you want, but this is a beautiful beefy flavor that's gonna add more beefiness. Of course, if you're keeping this vegetarian and you're gonna use a vegetable stock, you can just use olive oil. I've got this fat and I'm gonna use it. Now get a large heavy bottom pot on high heat the largest that you've got. And then we're gonna take that beef fat from the stock and get that into the pan. And we really wanna heat that up. Test the oil with one of those slices of onion and once it starts vigorously sizzling, we can add the whole load in. And we wanna start this off on high heat because we just have so many onions, we need to get them going a bit. Season them with a little bit of salt once they start to soften a bit. Add more fat if you need, and we're gonna keep it on high heat and just slowly drop the heat down incrementally as the onions begin to collapse. Hit it with some pepper and then just keep cooking and stirring and getting them moved around. As they cook, they're gonna start to release their moisture. That moisture is gonna kind of boil the onions a little bit. And at that point, I kind of like to knock the heat back up to evaporate that moisture. And then if I see the pan dry up at any point, then I can sort of just drop that heat back down a little bit. And then I'm just gonna bounce back and forth from high heat to low heat, managing it along the way. If I see a moisture build up, I'll knock it back up, try and evaporate that moisture. You know if there's lots of steam, that's that moisture evaporating. And if at any point I see that steam simmering down a bit, then I can lower the heat and cook these a little bit more slowly and that they're caramelizing properly until we get that nice brown caramelization on the onions going. We wanna get like a nice mahogany on the onions. We want that moisture evaporated and we want a little bit of fond starting to develop on that bottom of the pan. That is an indication that we're developing a lot of flavor. 
Now, besides the stock, we have a few more things we're gonna add to it. We're gonna add some Worcestershire sauce, a little bit of dried sherry, which is just a fortified wine with some brandy, some flour, some thyme, some bay leaf. And once the onions are caramelized and where you want them, we're gonna add that flour and cook that for about a minute or two to cook out the raw flour flavor and add a little bit more fun to the bottom of the pan. And then we're gonna deglaze with that sherry. Just make sure you pick up all those brown bits off the bottom of the pan, and then we can add in our beef stock. Once the beef stock is in, we can add the herbs. I like to tie it into a little bundle. A little bit of that Worcestershire sauce. We can adjust the seasoning with salt, a little bit of black pepper, and we wanna bring it up to a boil and allow that flour to just kind of thicken and add a little bit of body and structure to the soup. And while the soup was simmering, I just had the idea it needed just a touch of soy sauce, maybe a tablespoon or two, and it just adds a little bit of that umami that really sets it off to the next level. Let the soup simmer while we prepare the croutons. Okay, now that the the soup is done, it's a simmering on the stove, we can cook our crouton. Now I'm only making enough for about two, so if you're doing a bigger batch, the soup can feed four to six people, you're gonna need the whole baguette. So we got our bread, and we're just gonna nicely coat with olive oil. Now remember, we wanna get these not dark, not burnt, but overly crispy and dried out, because we're gonna just throw them into broth. So they're obviously going to get soft, but we can make sure that they're super firm before we do that. So you know when you make croutons and you can still kind of feel squishiness in them sometimes? You take them out a little too early, you're too impatient? Don't do that here. Into the oven. The temp's at 425 and when it comes out, we're gonna rub it with some garlic and that garlic on that hot bread, it's really gonna infuse that bread with a nice subtle garlic flavor, not too much. It's gonna go really nicely with the dish. All you have to do is just kind of give it a, a cut in half. So we'll put that off to the side, grate our Gruyere. Now this is the good stuff, you know, because you can see Gruyere on the outside. Emmentaler cheese would also work and I'm also gonna add some Parmigiano Reggiano. And we'll just set this off to the side. Got some grated Parmigiano Reggiano. I'm gonna hold that off to the side. So those are gonna be my two cheeses. And then I have my crock. It's a nice oven safe crock. I'm gonna throw this under the broiler. I also like that it's kind of like a bowl shape. Kind of looks like an onion. It's kind of deep. So I'm gonna be able to get like two nice ladlefuls and then a lot of the, the croutons on top. So I'm gonna have almost a crouton in every bite of soup, which is sort of the idea. It's like, the soup's good, but the whole thing is the trio. The cheese, the crouton, the soup, and the onion. That's what I'm going for in every bite. So we're designing that ahead of time. Rotate the croutons, check them regularly, and make sure that they're browning perfectly. And when they're nicely golden brown and crisp all the way through and fully dried, take them out. Here we go, nicely toasted. You can take our garlic clove, and just give each a little rub. Croutons are ready. Beautiful. Nice, rich, golden color, thick. Now you wanna get the broiler turned on and you wanna adjust the rack inside the oven to make sure that you've got enough room for the crock to fit under the broiler without it being too close or too far away. Then we can go ahead, fill up our crock with the soup. And we wanna make sure we have a little bit of room left on top so that we can fit in a nice hefty amount of our crouton. I made a mistake. I would recommend adding a layer of cheese in between the croutons and the soup first, then adding the croutons on top and then going heavy with the Gruyere on top of the croutons and then a little bit Parmesan cheese on top of that. And then pop that under the broiler until that fully melts and gets nice and caramelized and browned. You wanna pull that out of the oven, garnish with some fresh chives, and then you're ready to enjoy one of the best French onion soups you're ever gonna have. See how you get a nice spoonful of bread? That's what I'm talking about. Absolutely superb French onion soup. Head on down to the description, there'll be a link to my website for the full recipe. If you wanna support the show, make sure you head on down to ritual.com and check out their protein shakes. That's all that I have today. I'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and go feed yourself. For more comfort food recipes, got a few more on the screen right now, like this beef stroganoff that you've really got to try. And thank you for watching.